guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. So tonight we are not working on the race truck. We are working on Caitlin. So it's about time we gave Caitlin some much needed attention. Um, as you guys know, Caitlin is my 2012 um, 67 Cummins with 68 RFE. She's got, she just rolled over to 70,000 miles. I know that's not a lot of miles. Um, she spent a couple winters in the garage because, well, as the name states, Caitlin, she's had some trans issues over the years, uh, deciding whether she was a six speed or a four speed. But none of that has anything to do with what we're gonna be doing to her tonight. So working on Caitlin, uh, primarily because we've had some issues. So I did a video a few months ago talking about death wobble, how we had some death wobble going on, and we'll go into that in a minute. And looks like now we got some fogging going on, on in our headlight we just reassembled. Um, we'll have to look into that as well. The passenger side seems to be fine. So anyhow, like I said, we had some death wobble issues. Now, since we uh, went to a new tire to a Nitto Terra Grappler, as opposed to the old uh, Kumo Escas, Esca, however you say it, that we had, it has improved. I haven't really had an issue with death wobble since. A couple instances where I get you know that shimmy starting um but it hasn't been as bad so changing the tires did help we could have had a broken belt or something like that but during hunting season dad and i got looking at the front end of the truck i was telling him about it so we jacked it up we checked it and looked like the wheel bearings had a little wear and the ball joints had a lot of wear especially on the passenger side so why has it taken me so long to get to doing ball joints and whatnot well that actually wasn't my fault. Well, partially it was because the race truck was in the garage and it was winter, but the other part of it was we were waiting on this stuff sitting on the table. So as you can see, we have all Carly stuff. This is their uh, front end upgrade kit. I first ordered it, you know, back around hunting season, and it actually took about a month, month and a half to get here. Um, my understanding was that when the ball joints got done, the coating that was on them, Carly wasn't happy with them, so they sent them back to whoever coats them for them, yada, yada, yada. Took us a while to get parts, and then we were heavy in the race truck and the cold. So here we are to that. So let's get to unboxing this stuff, and I'll show you what all we got, what all we're replacing, and why. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this truck back to feeling the way it should be, nice and tight up front. Before we get to unboxing this stuff, I would just want to go over what Death Wobble is. I had never experienced it until I had experienced it in Caitlin. Uh, my 1500 with 130,000 miles, never felt it, never had a problem, and I had replaced the ball joints in it. But it's one of those things that you, you won't understand until it happens. But um, on Thruin Fabri Thruin? 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 Fabrications website, they have a great article on death wobble and the causes of it and all that. So I'll try and remember to put a link down in the description so you guys can check that out. But I'll read you the first paragraph and it explains death wobble to it too. Death wobble is a violent, uncontrolled oscillation of the front wheels. It is mostly induced by opposing caster forces, skid bouncing of the tires quickly side to side. It can be very tricky to fix if not familiar with what it is that is actually causing it. There are two different levels of intensity, ranging from two seconds of violent shaking to non-stop uncontrollable whole vehicle vibration that won't stop until the vehicle stops. Either way, it's called death wobble for a reason. You'll know death wobble when you experience it, like I had said. If the, your truck is vibrating a little from time to time, being slightly annoying, annoying, that is not death wobble. When death wobble happens, your heart elevates and you know it. So that's just their uh, introduction to their little article. But check it out. It lists like the top things um, that cause death wobble. And it's all stuff we're going to be taking care of tonight in the garage. So let's get unboxing this stuff and talking about all these parts. So the first part of this Carly kit, like I said, it is the Carly front end upgrade kit. Um, this particular kit is for a 2010 to 2012 truck, pretty much all of my trucks, but they make one for every make and, or not every make, every year of the Dodge platform. So 
these are our ball joints on Carly's website. They have a good explanation of why these are better. Um, there's some brass or some softer materials in the factory one. One part of them's got a, one of them has a plastic part in it, all this stuff. But the nice thing about these Carly ball joints, they're not cheap, but they're guaranteed for life. So we have upper and lower ball joints, um, synthetic grease. So the next thing is, is a steering stabilizer. This is Carly's steering stabilizer. This is supposed to be improved from the factory design. Um, apparently the factory steering stabilizer is an oil filled unit, which hampers the amount of um, load or vibration or whatever, you know, it limits the amount of stabilization it actually can do. So this is the Carly unit. And then this bad boy right here is the Carly track bar. Uh, this thing is beefy. So, I, man, it, it's heavy. So the factory one, and if you guys saw that previous Death Wobble video, the plastic bushings, or I think like polyurethane or whatever they are on Caitlin are actually coming apart. I could see pieces, chunks coming out. So this eliminates that, but it's supposed to be like a thicker DOM tubing that should also you know reduce flex with the track bar. This is one of those things from what Carly had said is often overlooked and people don't replace it and it's probably one of the biggest causes of problems. And as you can see, they got nice welded section here with some bracing. Yeah, I mean, thing definitely looks gnarly. And the last piece of the puzzle, and I just got these from Rock Auto, we got new wheel bearings. Like I said, we had saw that there was a little bit of play in the wheel bearings and with the amount of traveling i would like to do with the race truck and whatnot this year figured while we're doing all this stuff might as well do wheel bearings as well so to go along with all this also borrowed a couple tools from my father um we got a couple pickle forks i believe they're called for trying to get some of this stuff apart basically it's just a big wedge but it's also like a tuning fork and we got a ball joint press so We'll get the Jack and Caitlin up, uh, get her on some jack stands. I'll try and show you guys some of the, I'll try and show you some of the wear there on the passenger side where it's really bad. And then we'll get to just taking everything apart. So I've actually never done these on one of the diesel trucks before. I've done it on my 1500, which everything's just kind of a lot smaller. It is still a solid axle application, but pretty much wheel comes off caliper comes off brake drum comes off and then we start getting into the nitty-gritty i don't know if the axles have to come out of this or not but we're going to find out i know they do on my 1500. so we got her jacked up um to check the wheel bearing just kind of grab it at the corners if you grab it like this you'll end up trying to steer the truck a little bit but just grab it like this just jack up the one side and i don't know if that you guys will be able to hear that Definitely a lot of movement and definitely shot. So it's a good, good thing we got the wheel bearings. Definitely need to be replaced. Uh, hunting season, they're just starting to get there. Now onto the ball joint. So hopefully you guys could see that. So I think both those ball joints are shot. Um, I can really hear them, but basically all you're gonna do is take a big pry bar under the tire and forcefully pull up. Now, all this checking um, with this, the track bar, all this stuff, certainly much easier with two people. If you have two people, one person can operate the pry bar or wiggle the wheel. The other person can watch all the components move. So we'll get this thing up on jack stands, start disassembling all this crap.
So everything's all apart. We are down to our axle shaft, not our axle shaft. We are down to just our axle. So I got the bores all cleaned up. They got uh, anti seize on there per uh, Carly's instructions. So a couple things, we took the brake caliper off first. What I always do is I just get a five gallon bucket set on. To me, that's easier than trying to hang it on something. Of course, you don't want that hanging by the lines. Um, our inboard brake shoe is a bit thin which doesn't surprise me, I'm pretty hard on brakes. So we're gonna need a set of brakes on that. Also, I was looking at the caliper here, or the rotor, I mean, and the rotor's cracked up here. So this was actually kind of seized to the bore. Um, I usually try and put some anti-seize on the inside of the bore so I can get these off. I must have neglected to do that the last time I changed these out. So it was on there pretty good. But since I saw that cracking, we need brake pads. Figure we'll do a set of rotors as well. So I just got the uh, hammer out and started beating on it. Beat on it, spin it. On, beat on it, spin it. Beat on it, spin it. I was trying to do it with the dead blow and it just wasn't working out. So we're going to need to get brakes for the truck. Once again, not surprised. I should have uh, got those in anticipation. So also our wheel bearing here. That's another thing we were planning on replacing it and it's a good thing because Hope you got hopefully you guys can hear that doesn't sound too sporty. So we have wheel bearings That's another one that I just took the bolts out and beat on it with a hammer to see how it would come out And it came right out. It really didn't take all that much compared to some some I've taken out in the past and other things but if you are just doing this because you need ball joints but your wheel bearings are good what you can do is just back your bolts out a little bit and you can put a an extension and a socket on the bolt and actually get somebody to turn it for you I mean you could try and do it yourself but lining it up it would be a pain but get somebody to turn the wheels for you and you can actually use the power steering to push the bolt and push the wheel the wheel bearing out as an assembly but we're replacing it so we didn't do that and then our axle it just pulls out at that point another thing with that it takes a very large nut um this castle nut i don't have a socket that actually fits it uh i have a 41 millimeter socket and then that set i have bumps up to like a 46 this thing's like a 42 or something but i had an inch and three quarter um one inch drive or three quarter drive i should say that i used and that worked well i think when we go to torque it we're gonna have to get the right socket because that was a little loose but i also needed i needed an extension on it i actually put a scaffold pipe on it and we were able to knock that thing loose Lastly on our steering knuckle, which actually sits like this So we had to disconnect this steering linkage Basically, I took the nut off and just you beat on the end here kind of into it and eventually it will drop out It's just like a like a taper fit um, So also we took the nuts off of the the ball joints and I got the pickle fork in here to get this out I tried beating on it a little bit. It wasn't coming put the pickle fork in came right out <sighs> so once that was out we had our ball joint press we had to use you got to get the right stuff this one of dad's just isn't quite tall enough to use the spacers as you should so i had these old air dog mounts of mine um, i tried using just one of these quarter inch plates and it started to bend so i needed both of them in order to get the ball joint out i used this rather than using 
rather than using one of these caps um just put that across the spacer and i was able to get the thing right up the bottom one was a bit of a pain i need an extension on my ratchet for that um not having like a quality air setup really kind of sucks doing this so on to the new stuff so on our ball joints here's our old ones as you can see this upper one it just moves out really easily so that shut and then the lower one yeah it just it just flops all over the place so it's shot as well so that moves us on to the carly stuff that we will be installing so our lower ball joints basically to install these it's a reverse process of of taking them out but you have to remove your grease fitting and then you have to make sure when you install it you put this washer on here for installation they say in their instructions if you don't and you mess this cover up there goes your warranty on your nice new ball joints the top ones they have to be disassembled so you have the rod the cap and like the body of it so we'll install the body and then install the rest of it grease everything and all that so needless to say with the brakes and all that we're not going to be getting this job done tonight but we'll be well on, way, well on our way so let's get to installing these ball joints and get this side wrap up and see what we can get done on the passenger side Everything's reinstalled as far as we can go on the driver's side here. Uh, the wire for the wheel bearing, which we'll get into in a second. I haven't ran that yet. I'm going to wait till we get the caliper back up. So we can't really go much further because we need brake pads. We need a rotor. We also need the correct socket for axle nut. And I also need a better torque wrench because the final torque on the axle nut is like 263 foot pounds. Mine's only good to 250. But since we got to wait on the other stuff, uh, rather than just going to 250 and then going a little further uh we'll try and get a, a torque wrench that can do it right so we're done on this side for this evening we'll start tearing the other side apart see how far we get really reinstalling these ball joints much easier than uh pulling the old ones out one thing i forgot to tell you guys and of course i hooked the steering linkage back up but underneath here where the ball joints connect you got to rotate this knuckle back and forth um, just to make sure that it has clearance that it's not hitting the ball joints otherwise you have to take some metal off which carly has right here in her instructions you know you see the gap you just want to rotate this steering knuckle back and forth otherwise you got to pull it back off grind it a little um you know clearance of cast iron so we'll get to the other side we'll get to ripping that apart and oh the wheel bearing so i got these timkin wheel bearings one thing to just don't go cheap on wheel bearings uh get good stuff um timkins what i always go by uh it's, we use bearings at work a lot and i always seem to stray towards timkin i feel like they have a quality product and really looking at the wheel bearing itself the abs wire that comes with it has all the little notches or all the little rubber connectors it even has the little plastic keepers for on the uh, steering knuckle and all that so it, it seems quality to me like i said timkins a brand that i trust but skf should be good something like that but don't get the what is it like 100 or 85 dollar wheel bearings they're not going to last they're not worth the effort get something good um like i said timkins something that i feel is a quality product
ball joints are installed our new carly ball joints that is everything went well everything went as it should a little quicker than the other side we already had the tools knew what we needed uh, like i said ball joints went just fine nothing to really report steering knuckles on the steering linkage is connected so i started to put the axle back in and I thought, you know what, I didn't check this U-joint. I checked the driver's side, everything's tight. Well, on this side, and I don't know if you guys can see it, there's a little bit of gray there, if you can see. Um, when I was moving it all around and I saw that and really started to investigate, this U-joint, if I, if I hold both sides with either hand, you can see a side-to-side -side play that shouldn't be there. Um, everything else is tight, but this one side of the U-joint is starting to go. So since everything's apart, we're replacing all this stuff, we're gonna throw new U-joints in the truck. I will have to pull the wheel bearing back off the driver's side, but it's just one of those incidental things like the brakes. Yeah, I could have got them beforehand, but you never really know till you get in it what the condition is. U-joints, um, 70,000 miles, you know, that's a crapshoot whether they're good or not. Ours are bad, so we're gonna change them. Um, we also have to get a socket and a torque wrench so we can torque our axle nut so really we're not losing anything tonight we just didn't get our wheel bearing installed but no uh, no big deal then again we do have to pull the driver's side back off but oh well it is what it is these are the things you run into so looking at our ball joints the passenger side upper ball joint is actually in better shape than the driver's side the driver's side as you can see is very loose and moves all around the Passenger side, it's actually still pretty tight. But when it comes to the bottom ball joints, uh, they're both just loosey-goosey. I mean, you grab them with both hands, you got a set of maracas. So those need to change. We, you know, we're not doing this just to do it. We did find some things that were, were at fault and some other things regarding our brakes and U-joints like I had already mentioned. So guys, um, we're doing ball joints. We're doing wheel bearings. Do these normally go out at around 70,000 miles? I don't know. Um, I am a little harder on equipment than most people, I think. I tend to drive this truck, like, probably a little harder than people drive their sports cars. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do it too. I drive the thing hard, brakes, tires, they just don't last as long for me as they do most people and they never have, probably never will. But that goes along with the suspension components in the front. I mean, it's the same thing. It's all wear and tear. And these back roads that I'm always driving on around here, the passenger side is obviously going to get more beat up. It's on the side of the road. But, you know, these back roads, tar and chip roads is a lot of the roads here around the house. So there might be like a divot in the road. Well, that divot was there 10 years ago. They just keep tar and chipping over. It doesn't fix the problem. <laughs> So anyway, end of that little rant, but we're well along our way. We gotta get some parts, we gotta get some tools so we can get this wrapped up, get the track bar in, get our steering stabilizer in, and be good to go, and then probably get an alignment down the road. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Get out in your garage, get the wrench on your truck.